Now for naturopathic treatments, I have a few things. Uh, we're going to talk about physical medicine, nutrition, homeopathy, and botanical medicine. And again, these are all treatments that are non-pharmaceutical, no prescriptions involved here whatsoever. So say you have back pain, it's not getting any better. A uh, naturopathic doctor could do could practice traditional Chinese medicine on you because many of them do have a degree in acupuncture. Many naturopaths work or have studied acupuncture together in during the same timing. And they can do acupuncture, qigong, or tai chi. Uh, they can they could refer you to a chiropractor, but some naturopaths have specialized in physical medicine and they do some some of the things that chiropractors can do to a limited extent like manipulation as you see in the picture on the top uh, physiotherapy that includes more like devices that uh, give uh, ultrasound waves or electrical impulses or interferentials and they help uh, with the pain and the inflammation inside of the tissue and it's non-invasive. There's nothing going inside. It's just all outside of the skin. And then some doctors also have Ayurveda in their background, like ancient Indian medicine. And they could help you do specialized type of yoga and marma point treatment, which is a type of trigger point or like tissue release. So it helps to loosen up the muscles, the ligaments, and that can itself with treatment help you lower the pain. Uh, and then on the bottom just shows you a study about people who went to complementary and alternative medicine and found relief by going to them and they're on their back pain. Here's a few pictures of what I meant by physical medicine. So uh, the Qigong you see here, the, the, on the top left, those are the elderly women uh, doing Qigong, a type of meditative exercise. Tai Chi is similar, but they have a separate type of philosophy, even though they're both Chinese. Uh, yoga, you see on the bottom right, another good way to help you uh, stabilize movements on the back without going too far. And then TENS, this is a device used in physical medicine that your doctor could prescribe to you, or your physical therapist could prescribe to you. Uh, but it's also in naturopathic medicine we learn it too because it's non, not really invasive it's only electrical impulses to help decrease the amount of pain so next one is nutrition now you may wonder how can nutrition help your back pain well there are actually some correlates that explain how nutrition can be a big component of back pain, especially if you have problems with weight, in this case specifically, obesity. So, you know, you, you know that the back has like it's a small curve, but that's shown in like the picture of a healthy person who's not overweight or obese. But the moment one starts to put, in, put on weight, the shift starts changing and you see in the picture on the bottom that there's a pull there's a, a gravity pull from the belly that gets larger as one becomes obese and that belly pull is eventually going to curve the back more than it has to so it can compensate in order for you to keep standing straight and that curvature extra curvature can affect your neck or your low back and cause low back pain. Uh, this is why it's important to take care of your weight, especially if you have back pain and have problems with or overweight or obesity. And then the other thing too is that obesity is considered a type of systemic inflammation, inflammation, which means that there is little bits of damage going on, going on around your whole body. So if you start taking care of that, you know, getting proper nutrition, getting taken care of by a, a nutritionist or a naturopathic doctor, by changing diet slowly, you can do, it can really help, especially with the chronicity, if, if the pain is long-term. 
Another type of medicine that are very helpful are homeopathy. And these are good because it's very difficult to develop toxicity. And if you have a good practitioner who's helping you out with them, you'll be able to continue this for a very long period of time. And the three common ones that I see a lot with back pain are Arnica, Hypericum, and Bryonia. These are all herbs, but they're prepared in a homeopathic preparation. So Arnica is for the type of person who has a pain after an injury. So think of like a um, car accident, that's what I'm getting, or a fall. They, they have a bruise, they're sore, and they also don't want to see the doctor. That type of remedy will fit in that person well. Hypericum is a type of injury where the nerves are damaged, there's a lot of shooting pain involved, and then there's a lot of spasms in the muscles of the back. So that would be a hypericum. And then bryonia is good for a person who is just very weak. Uh, they, they feel worse, the pain gets worse when they move, but it's better when they, when they rest. And the type of pain is like stitching and tearing, like something's being pulled very hardly from their, or very harshly from their back. So that's a type of bryonia remedy. And then at the bottom, I show you a picture, uh, a study of homeopathic treatments for patients with low back pain on a two year follow-up, which showed good promising results. And this is from the Clinical Journal of Pain. Next one, or the last one, at least for the naturopathic medicine, is botanical medicine, so herbs. How can herbs help with back pain? Well, again, depends on the type of back pain you have, because we spoke about a lot about different ways. But if you are somebody who experiences like degeneration, gener degeneration of the cartilage and the bone, then Devil's Claw, the first one that you see on the top, could be a helpful one for you because you can take it inside, it's an anti-inflammatory, and it also has been known to repair cartilage. Uh, now, if you wanna try something outside to just place on the area of pain, then you can try red chili, red chili pepper. And you may see it in some, in some pharmacies, you may see it as capsaicin cream, or you can make it yourself. And it's traditionally used for nerve pain, even in the Journal of European Botanical Medicine, though the Commission E, which is a, a research-based list of herbs, and you will see capsicum there. Uh, and then comfrey root is, or symphytum, is very useful for bruises and speed up wound healing. So if you've just had a fall, just had a bruise, you wanna try something on, then comfrey would be the best one because it speeds up the healing process and it's very good. You know, you just get it in a, an oil or an ointment type. So this is from a study on the Cochrane Library of the Herbal and Medicine for Low Back Pain. And these are the three most common, the three herbs I chose to speak about, but there are more on that article if you wanna check it out. And here are pictures of the herbs I just talked about. Uh, they have the chemicals written and the little squiggly hexagons. That's the chemical structure, if you're curious to know. But the devil's claw is the very top. The chili pepper is in the middle. And then at the bottom, you'll see the comfrey root, which is sort of popular in the Northeast region. 